So it seems like everywhere now accepts Apple Pay. Stores, vending machines, your dentist, your church, the Girl Scouts. If you live in the US, then the transition from swiping your car to hovering your phone feels like it happened overnight. Around 2015, everyone in the US started receiving these new credit and debit cards with these chips in them. Then before we get a chance to even understand why all of a sudden we were getting these new cards, Google and Apple were creating banks of their own, coming out with Google Wallet and Apple Pay. And now with more than half of Americans opting for contactless payment, it's safe to say that swiping our cards will soon be a thing of the past. But why did we stop swiping our cards in the first place? And why was the US suddenly bombarded with all these new payment methods? So today we're gonna to break down this transition, including why swiping your card is dangerous, why our cards all of a sudden have this computer chip in them, and how the rest of the world knew about this way before the US. Until 1950, the main payment method that you would use at a store, restaurant, venue, etc., was either cash or check. Some stores did have their own credit management systems, which we would recognize as layaway or buy now, pay later. It allowed people to buy items from their store with credit and then pay it back at the end of the month with interest. But this credit was only valid at specific stores. Like if you had credit at Macy's, you couldn't go then use that at Walmart. This was all until a man named Frank McNamara in New York came up with the idea of the diner's club after he went to dinner one night and forgot his wallet. He wanted to be able to pay for his dinner with credit. So as a result, he put together a partnership between a bunch of restaurants in New York City and diners club members could eat there and pay with credit and then pay off their bill later on in the future. And these members would show their diners club membership card at restaurants to prove that they were a member. So the Diners Club became the first credit card company in the US, later becoming Diners Club International and being bought by Discover in 2008. 10 years after the Diners Club was created, the magnetic stripe card, so the card that we're most used to today, was created. It's usually a plastic card made to be the same size as like a playing card and it has a magnetic stripe on the back of it. Over the years, these cards were used for all types of things like building access, gift cards, library cards, but it was mainly used for swiping your debit and credit card to complete a transaction. So I'm sure we know that swiping that strip gives the card reader enough information to take money from our account. But how exactly does it read that data from the magnetic strip? You can think of the magnetic strip as a bunch of small magnets clumped together. These small magnets can interact with their adjacent magnet, creating a strong magnetic field if the two are magnetized in opposite directions or little to no magnetic field if two adjacent magnets are magnetized in the same direction. If you watched some of my previous videos, then you may know that electromagnetism allows magnets to be turned into electricity. So for card readers and other electronic devices, this conversion is done using an electromagnet. Given that all computer technology, which includes card readers, only understands ones and zeros, where one represents electricity flowing to the computer CPU, and zero represents electricity not flowing, the presence of a magnetic field can be used to represent a one, and the absence of a magnetic field can be used to represent a zero. So when the card is swiped through the card reader, it's actually interacting with an electromagnet that is converting the magnetic fields on the card into electricity that represents one or zero. Then, these ones and zeros can be decoded into actual letters and numbers, like your name, your card number, and the expiration date. Given that the configuration of the tiny magnets on the magnetic strip never change, any card reader can technically decode the magnetic fields into letters and numbers. So these magnetic stripe cards did allow people to make quick payments, not having to sort through cash or write a check or manually enter the card information that's printed on the card. But even though it made transactions quicker, it didn't necessarily make them safer. It also spurred the creation of ATMs, AKA, automated teller machines. Before magnetic stripe cards, customers had to interact with actual human bank tellers to deposit or withdraw money. So while the creation of the magnetic stripe card did have some advantages, they also had some huge disadvantages that make them susceptible to fraud even today. The biggest one is that anyone with a card reader can swipe your card and get your information, and scammers definitely take advantage of that. Some use skimmers, which are these inconspicuous devices that can fit onto an existing card reader at a point of sale terminal or ATM. 
As you swipe your card to make a purchase, you're also unknowingly swiping it through a skimmer where your card information is being collected. Others could be secretly swiping your card in a matter of seconds that your card is out of your sight. So for instance, in a place like a restaurant where someone has to leave with your card to charge it, your card information can then be sold and used to create a new card connected to your account or to make online purchases and get the packages sent to an unsuspecting address. And of course, any other malicious thing they wanna do with your information. And you may be wondering how they're able to do this without your PIN number or your CVV, which is used as a second method of verification and therefore not stored in the information inside the magnetic strip. When it comes to ATMs or point of sale terminals specifically, they can hide cameras near the device or even have a way to be able to track what you clicked on the keypad to collect your PIN number. The CVV, on the other hand, can be written down or memorized from just looking at the card itself. Credit card companies recognized this issue and decided to come up with a solution. In 1996, the EMV chip card was created. EMV is an acronym for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa. And these three companies basically came together to create a new payment method. EMV cards add a second payment option to the traditional magnetic stripe cards by embedding a microchip into the card. You may think that this is a microchip, but this is actually just the contact pad that's used to connect the microchip to the card reader when the card is inserted. The microchip itself is under the contact pad. The microchip stores data about your card and instructions on how to securely send that data to the card reader. But the card doesn't work by itself. When EMB cards were first created, they needed to be inserted into the card reader, which powers the microchip and allows it to communicate with the card reader. Think of the chip like a desktop computer. It doesn't work until it's plugged into a power source. Every time the card is inserted, it generates a new, unique encrypted message that includes the card information, but it's encrypted in a way that only the card reader can understand. The card reader then decrypts that information to verify with the card issuer if the card is legit, and then completes the transaction. Because a unique message is generated for each transaction, skimmers wouldn't work for stealing card data from these EMV cards. By the early 2000s, most European countries made the switch over to EMV cards, with many countries in Asia Pacific and Latin America following immediately after. And by 2007, these EMV cards were enhanced to make contactless payments, or what we usually call tap to pay. The subscribe button is also kind of like tap to pay because if you tap it, then I'm one step closer to being monetized. Tap to pay cards are denoted by this symbol and they connect to the point of sale terminal wirelessly instead of having to be inserted. It uses the same microchip and the same encryption methods it would use if inserted. The only difference within the physical card is that tap to pay cards have a flat antenna inside attached to the microchip to facilitate the wireless communication between the chip and the card reader. This particular wireless connection is called near field communication or NFC. It's the same technology that's used to unlock your hotel rooms when you hover your key. NFC devices are designed to only interact when they're within short distances. For cards and card readers, that distance is around four inches. When the card is close enough to the reader, the reader can send radio waves to the card that powers it and allows it to send encrypted card information back to the reader. In the same way that radio waves are used to connect your devices to Wi-Fi and connect your phone to a Bluetooth speaker, radio waves are used to wirelessly connect your credit card to the card reader for contactless payments. Though you can also argue that despite all these new safety measures, scammers could just steal your card information by reading it directly off your card or taking a photo of it, even finding a way to intercept the information during an online payment. And these things are all true. These added safety measures for the card are for card present transactions only, AKA in-person transactions. Card not present transactions, which in most cases today just means online transactions, rely on the safety of the website itself, which is a whole other set of safety measures. So meanwhile in the US, while the rest of the world is either inserting their cards or tapping their cards, we're just out here swiping away. Like all these new advancements are happening in other countries and we know nothing about it. The US became the last major country to move to these new EMV cards. The reason that the US didn't move as quickly as the rest of the world is that for a while, the cost to switch over to the EMV card system just wasn't worth it. 
It was cheaper to just let the occasional fraud happen and then reimburse the customer than it was to switch everyone over to the EMV system. That idea backfired though in the early 2010s when huge retailers started getting attacked. In 2013, a cyber attack on Target's point of sales terminals caused data from 40 million credit and debit cards of shoppers to be stolen within three weeks. They were able to steal the data directly from the magnetic stripes of the cards. Then a few months later in 2014, Home Depot was hit by a similar cyber attack and it ended up being even worse. Their attack went unnoticed for five months and they had 50 million credit cards and debit cards stolen. Both of these breaches cost each company around $200 million. And even though they were some of the larger attacks, they definitely weren't the only ones at that time. So major credit card companies came together and basically forced US businesses to have EMV card compliant point of sales terminals by October 1st, 2015, one year after the Home Depot attack. If they didn't and any fraudulent transactions happened at their business, the business would be responsible for covering the damages, not the credit card company. So banks and credit card issuers are now in a rush to send US customers these new EMV cards before October 2015. But by then, another huge shift in personal finance was taking place. In 2014, Apple released Apple Pay, which allowed iPhone users to tap to pay with their iPhones or Apple Watches over point of sale terminals. Despite Google coming out with Google Wallet a few years before that, that introduced the same technology for Android phones, it took Apple Pay's release to really get tap to pay technologies noticed in the US. Newer iPhones and Android phones were NFC enabled, which allowed them to be used the same way that EMV cards with the tap to pay were used. Okay, so let's pause. If you're confused about this timeline, it's because the timeline is actually confusing especially if you're from the US. Basically, while the rest of the world had a steady transition from magnetic stripe cards to EMV chip cards, to tap to pay cards, to tap to pay phones, the US went from magnetic stripe cards to EMV chip cards, tap to pay cards, and tap to pay phones all in one year. So with the world almost fully converted to contactless payments, you shouldn't ever really need to swipe your card again. But if you do need to swipe your card, just make sure you give it a pull to make sure it's not a skimmer. If you really wanna know how to protect your money, check out my previous video about the eight lies about money that we were told growing up. 